Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to Carpe Diem Sailing. If you're new to the channel, my name is Marco. I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor. And in today's video, I'll be talking about heaving two single-handed. Welcome to episode 46, Heaving 2. So, Heaving 2. We're sailing close hold right now. We decide we want to stop. So Heaving 2 has many uses. I'm not going to get into them quite right now. One way, and I'm going to do it in a minute, is a crash stop. But for now, I just want to go through the mechanics of it. So to heave two, you leave everything the way it is. And by the way, single handing, heaving two is a great thing to have in your back pocket. So we're going to head up. Like we're tacking, you'll see the head sail will luff and then back. So if your boat's carrying a lot of speed, let it point into the wind for a bit to bleed the speed off. And then what happens is the wind's going to backwind the main, or sorry, the backwind the Genoa, and it's going to push it over to port in my case here. What I do back here is I bring my wheel back to starboard. And now we've got the rudder turning the boat to starboard, the wind in the head sail pushing the bow to port, and the main sail right now, you can play with that to maintain a slightly head to wind attitude. So a little more than a beam. Most modern boats will, and then lock the wheel. Most modern boats will heave to beam onto the seas. So there is some controversy as far as using it as a storm tactic. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but for coastal cruising in a very light chop like this, in this kind of a breeze, if you need to stop for whatever reason, this is a good way to get the boat stopped and keep it under control. So you can go forward to reef your main. Um, you know, personally, I prefer to reef my main while underway with the autopilot. It makes it a little easier because there's less pressure in the mainsail. But there's many other reasons for it. Good thing to practice. What I'm going to do now, my mainsail is hardened. I'm going to drive around back onto our close hauled course, and then I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna do it really fast. And then we'll show you just how far away, uh, you'll see by our wake how far we were from where we actually initiated the turn. So I'm unlocking my wheel. I'm gonna bear away. And the reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm jibing around is rather than letting that sail come out and sheet in on this side, all that stitching on the shrouds is hard on the sail. In this wind, I'm happy to jibe like that. Very light load on the uh, main sheet and traveler. So again, when you're jibing, be very careful about what's happening with your main sail. So heading back up to close hauled. I'm gonna build up some speed. And then we're gonna do what I call a crash heave too. Years ago, I had a dog fall overboard. When I, before I was an instructor, I was on my first little boat and the dog fell overboard. I immediately hove to and the dog swam back, pulled her back onto the boat and it was done. So it is a good thing to have in your back pocket, like I say, as an emergency maneuver. So here we go. We've got some speed up. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna turn quite a bit further, almost onto a beam reach on the opposite tack to make sure the boat doesn't come back. So here we go, all the way over, a crash heave too. So we come around, come all the way around, and then I bring my wheel back. Now, if you could film down there, just let's see the wake. You'll see, uh, hopefully you can see that on the camera, the boat will actually stop fairly close to our wake, right where we were. So when I say the boat will stop, it means it'll mostly stop. When you're hove to, you are fore reaching a little bit. So the boat will still be moving, but you might be stopped close enough that you can throw a heaving line to someone or at least tell them that you're coming back for them, that sort of thing. Crew overboard, I will do one a little bit later on, um, single-handed. Uh, there is, again, lots of controversy in crew overboard drills. Heaving two is definitely one of the methods to be considered. Now that I've gone over the steps and some of the reasons for heaving two, 
Let's take a look at a short animation that outlines exactly what's happening. Once you come about and the headsail is aback, the wind will push the bow downwind. As the boat bears away, it develops headway and starts to move through the water. Since the rudder is hard to starboard, as soon as the boat reaches steerage way, it turns back upwind. But the backed headsail pushes it back downwind. And so it goes, in a sort of falling leaf pattern. Depending on your particular rig and keel configuration, you might have to play with it a bit to get the boat settled down. As I mentioned in the video, the mainsail plays a secondary part, as I will explain in this animation. As you harden the main, the CE or center of effort moves back and the boat will tend to round up. As you ease the main, the CE will move forward and the boat will tend to bear away. Now let's take one last wide angle look at the maneuver. I head upwind and come about from a port tack. The boat is carrying a lot of speed, so I point straight into the wind to bleed off some of that speed. I then continue the turn to back the head sail, which pushes my bow to port. I steer all the way to starboard to counteract this turning effect, and I lock the wheel. Or in the case of a tiller, I tie it off to leeward as the boat stabilizes. I am now free to leave the helm. New episodes go up every second Wednesday. See you next time when I talk about throw bags and heaving lines. Till then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.